Well, it's a big show. Welcome to the fade route. It's a big bad show tonight. With DNZ. Yeah, it's a big show. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome to this week's episode of the Fade Route with DNZ. I am D, and we've got a great show for you tonight. We're going to discuss the quarterback carousel in the NFL, old names in new places, Calvin Ridley bets on football, and Coach K loses his final home game at Cameron Indoor Arena. But we'll begin today's show with Z's favorite topic, the MLB lockout. Huh. Both sides met until 3 a.m. last night and could not get a deal done today. So the league pushed back opening day to April 14th. Despite the owners closing the gap on the salary cap, players are still looking for modifications to the two rule five. Z how much more money can these players afford to lose during this lockout? Well, it's not the superstars, right? The superstars are a okay. It's the 26th guy, the guy that's just barely hanging on, you know, you're minor league journeyman that may or may not make the roster, the swing guys that might not be able to get a job in Japan or in the Mexican league or, you know, the, just maybe the last pitcher in a bullpen. Those are the guys that are really going to be affected by this, but they're all, I mean, they're teetering this close to losing Jackie Robinson Day because the next day, right, they were postponed until April 14th. April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day. That would be a true symbolic opening day. That would be fantastic. If, honestly, April 15th should probably be the opening day regardless. But that's neither here nor there. Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association are doing a disservice to their fans, but they don't necessarily give a shit either side. The players say they do. The owners say they do. But at the end of the day, who's really losing here? The billionaires are still billionaires. The millionaires are still millionaires. The fans are the ones getting gypped out of the product that they love. Now, some of the things that are being bandied about of the international draft. One side, the owners seem to be for it. The players, there's conflicting reports on whether they're for or against. Uh, owners, you know, it depends on the owner. The owners that are going to spend their international bonus slot money, they're, they're against it, you know, because they want to be able to pick the, you know, pick the pick of the litter. They want to be able to sign the best possible candidates. Like in an international draft, the Yankees don't touch Jason Dominguez. The Yankees don't get him. That's just how it works. And it's def- it would definitely shift the competitive balance away from the team with the deepest pockets because now if you have a draft that's truly a global draft, that definitely opens things up to where, you know, the talent is being more equally distributed. We'll see you, where this do, goes. Do you, but... do, yeah, do you think that the you, know, you mentioned some of the guys that are feeling the strap or that reliever or, or that, you know, 23rd or 24th guy on the roster, is that guy putting pressure on the union being like, guys, listen, we got the majority of things that we're looking to get here. The owners are trying, like, let's just play baseball. I mean, do you think they're putting that kind of pressure on it? Or is it the, the Scherzers and the Verlanders and the Kershaws are like, dude, we are not 
breaking this thing for anybody until we get everything we want. I think they are going to be a wall. Like I think that the established players are going to be in solidarity. Your established veterans. Now the guys who are like 36, 37 years old who may or may not be, you know, may or may not have a long-term future. Could they effectively cross a picket line and sign a minor league contract so that they can be in minor league camp? Because minor league baseball is going on as quietly as it's kept. You know, the 40 men on the 40 men roster are are not subject to it, but baseball's still going on. So there's nothing stopping free agent signings from occurring. And it would be, you know, I could definitely see that happening where guys are like, I just want to play. Yeah. You know, I, I can go to an independent league. I can go play in another country. I can go play for, like I said, I can go play for the Richmond Flying Squirrels. Shout out RVA. I can go play for Binghamton. I can go sign a minor league contract. I, I can just go do that. So I think, like, it's more of a pawn by the more established players because at the end of the day Tony Clark wants a raise and he wants to be paid for 162 games he didn't yeah. get his 162 games with COVID he didn't you know that everything was prorated they want to make their money back and you know what nobody's making their money back Sorry, you're not getting 2020 back it's just not how it works yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, we've, we've talked about it on the show since this whole thing started. I mean, I'm still on the side of the owners. And from what I'm reading, from what I'm seeing, it seems like the owners are bending a little bit. From what I read, they're raising the cap. They're not. They're, they're trying to close the gap. They're not going to give in to completely what the players want. But they're making some strides. They're making some, um, you know, they're giving in to a certain degree. And the players are not... The players are not willing to do that. And, uh, you know, at some point, you're going to have to play baseball. And under what grounds are you going to play them on? Are you going to be upset that you didn't get everything that you wanted? And you're going to do this in, what, four or five years from now? Or are you going to say, hey, you know, we pushed and we pried and let's play ball and be happy about it. But, you know. Let's be real here, though. I mean, if we really want to as fans, if we're if we're starving for baseball, Let's not pretend that there aren't markets out there. Is it going to be major league caliber ball? No. But can we go to Valley Renegades game? We absolutely can. Can we go to the Long Island Ducks? Absolutely. Can we go to these other things and support minor league baseball and effectively support it for the most part? You're supporting small business too. These are small businesses. They are not run by like these huge corporations. Major League Baseball consolidated a lot of the minor league teams, but a lot of them are still mom and pop organizations. So it would, you know, you'd be doing your local community a favor. And I think that would be a great way to go. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto, we really care about what's under your hood. Yeah, and uh, you know, speaking of doing people favors, uh, the Duke Blue Devils held their last game at Indoor Cameron Arena with Coach K as their coach. They played against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. And in attendance were a flood of Coach K's most prominent and best players. Despite all the festivities, the Blue Devils were blowed out by Carolina. Was this a slap in the face to Coach K? Or is this just another basketball team before the ACC tournament? First of all, can anybody explain to me... Is Jerry Seinfeld a UNC? Is, a, is he a Duke alum? Is he a UNC alum? Like, what the hell is Jerry Seinfeld? What's the deal with Jerry Seinfeld being a. Uh, Maybe his and, daughter went there or something. 
Is it maybe Ken Jong? What's Ken Jong doing there? Why is Ken Jong there? He Terrell. might have went there. He might have went there. I don't know. And, and Terrell Owens. We, I'm pretty sure we know that Terrell Owens didn't go to either one of those schools. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that he did not. To answer your question, he did. Ken Jong went to Duke, and then he went to UNC School of Medicine. So yeah. I stand corrected, Dr. He is Ken. a doctor. Yeah, he's a doctor. He's, he is he's a, a doctor. A doc- I, I stand corrected, Dr. Ken. But it's another game, man. It's a rivalry game. It's Duke-UNC. If you look at the overall records, you know, Duke is 16-4 and four in conference. North Carolina is 15-5. and five. Is that an upset? I mean, just because Duke is number four in the country, Duke was 26-5. and five. North Carolina is 23-8. and eight. You know, it's not like they were 8-23. and 23. It's not like North Carolina was, like, drizzling shits. Like, I, I don't understand where this is, like, considered an upset. You're, it's like saying the Yankees, the, the Yankees upset the Red Sox. No, the Yankees don't upset the Red Sox. And that's exactly what this is. You know, you have two premier college programs, and it's it's not an upset by any means of the imagination. It's It's definitely, you know, a rivalry game. Was it a slap in the face that UNC didn't do anything for Coach K? Maybe. I don't know. That seems a little self-serving if I'm Mike Krzyzewski. Am I expecting my blood rival to thank me for all the years of coaching? I don't expect parting gifts from, you know, essentially my enemy. I, I don't expect that at all. And would it surprise me if they met again? down the line? No. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Would not surprise me one iota. You know? Th- this was a it was a good win for North Carolina, and it, it wasn't a bad loss for Duke. Because Duke can still go in, they can still win the tournament, and they, they're still in line to get where they need to go in the NCAA tournament. Well, I mean, here's my thing. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. It's a rivalry. I mean, of course it is. And I think they're just about even in the last 50 or 60 years they've been playing. But, I mean, I disagree with you. I thought it was a slap in the face. I mean, here you are. You've coached all these games in Car- in, in in Duke, right? In Cameron Indoor. And, you know, you have, you have all your... You have all of your uh, prestigious players come back to see you off, to see your to see your final game, right? And you're playing against the uh, rival, but this is also a team that you should beat, especially, especially since Carolina is not that good this year. And it's not like the game was the game was close, but at the end they pulled away and. You lost, and this was a big stage. Everybody's watching this game. This is a big setup, right? This your your AD set this up. Your AD agreed to this. Like this is this is what they wanted. This is a showcase game. Former pros, Duke legends in attendance. Last tune up before the ACC tournament. No bueno, man, and no bueno. You lose this game now. The coach KO play it down, and coach K might even say, you know what? That's exactly what we needed. We needed, we needed one more loss before we get ready for the ACC tournament and go forward with our my last tournament run. But in all honesty, slap in the face. This should have been a beatdown. This should have been a blowout. This should have been, we're celebrating. We're, you know, carry Coach K off the court and instead shellacked. Well, to go back to what you're saying about there being such a thing as a good loss, this might be a good loss. When you talk to great coaches, this is what they build on. They don't yeah. build on wins. Right. They build on wins in in college. They build character through losing. Unbelievable. Because they Unbelievable. slap you down. That's what good coaches do. They'll slap you down and bring you back down to earth. You're not yeah. as good as you think you are. You're not feeling... You're not going to feel those... You know, newspaper clippings, you're not going to fill, you're not going to hear these news clips. You're not as good as you think you are. So guess what? We got to keep working. And that's what great coaches do. Like Tom Izzo, like, you know, in the pros, Bill Belichick, 
this is what great coaches do to motivate and inspire their players. And, there, you know, this is going to be like one of those games that's on ACC Network for years, right? It's Coach K's final game. And this is how this is how he went out, right? And it's amazing. It's a, it only seats 9,000 people. That's insane. I think Karnasek, I can see more than that. It's crazy. But, yeah, I mean, it's over. It's done with. They'll have they'll, they're, they're, the ACC tournaments already on the way. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave. From the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, sweetlifebrownieco.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live, and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook, too, at sweetlifebrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043, and tell them D&Z sent you. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co., because there's always room for a brownie. Moving over to football, Mr. Calvin Ridley was recently banned for the 2022 season after NFL investigators found Ridley bet on football while he was on leave for mental health issues. Ridley says he does not have a gambling problem. He simply placed a bet on the Atlanta Falcons to win a game. Big deal, little deal, no deal. It is a big deal in that it is, you know, it's one of those things that... Yeah, they he picked up he picked him to win, and he wasn't playing. But it is definitely a slippery slope, right? You have your fan duels, you have your draft kings, you have you know in-game parlays, you have you know multiple team par multiple game parlays, and it speaks to the competitive imbalance, right? Because yeah, he wasn't active; he was out injured. Well, injured due to his mental health issue. He Air was out on the reserve list. Right. He was out on his reserve list. But today, he wouldn't have placed that bet. Say that that wouldn't happen. And, you know, it, it is definitely something that can be potentially hazardous moving forward because say he lost right you lose to the wrong people now all of a sudden what do you have to do to pay back those debts yes it was fifteen hundred dollars i understand that it's not about the money it's not about the amount it's about the competitive balance of it it's fifteen hundred dollars this go round. look at the greats right you look at a guy like michael jordan jordan was Severe, severe gambling ways. And the allegation, if we remember, is that Michael Jordan's dad was murdered because of gambling debts. So. Allegedly. 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 We are to believe that. Could it? Uh, could that absolutely happen? Sure. If you're in bed with the wrong people, absolutely. And you know, I understand the domestic violence aspect. You know, Ray Rice only got a two-game suspension, effectively blackballed from the league. Yeah. But he was only suspended for two games. Josh Gordon was suspended effectively for six seasons because he smoked weed <laughs> multiple times. He's what, like eighty-three suspensions? He I, I seems know. to make it on it. He seems to make it on a team every year, and if I'm, I think he even got a Super Bowl ring at some point. Uh, I think he might have, yeah. But you know, it's not not all things are created equal, and 
I understand where, where people are coming from with their vitriol regarding the domestic violence aspect. And frankly, okay. But this is this is also a problem. And disciplinary the disciplinary committee the committee needs to come down as hard on the other issues as they did on Calvin Ridley. Because it's a bad look all the way around for every infraction. Well, listen, it's an, to me, it's an enormous deal because he's the guy that got caught, right? How many are there? How many players are doing this that have not been caught? How many college kids, how many college kids are doing this? This is what happens when you invite gambling into sports. Next players will be taking dives and college players are going to start disappearing. I mean, it's scary to say something like that, but that's what's going to start happening. And listen, I have to do my research. I'm not sure, but in the NFL, I'm pretty sure players cannot bet on football, but they can bet on other sports. Staff can't bet on anything. I'm pretty sure that's the rule. So, you know, that's the other problem here, right, is is that, well, it's like I can't bet on football. I'm not playing football right now. Who's going to know? How's anybody going to find out? Meanwhile, he's got the inside track, right? It's like, hey, right. how did practice go this week? Oh, what right. do we do? How how we look? Like, right? Young how Wei is that? Koo. Young Wei Ku has a hamstring injury. Don't you know? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't bet know. the over, bet the under, like things like that. Uh, it's slippery. It's slippery. But this is what's going to happen. You invite gambling into professional sports. And it's in your face all the time, right? If you listen to ESPN radio, they're talking about the different bets and the parlays you could do with Caesars. If you're watching ESPN, they're telling you that, oh, you're getting a free bet, you're getting a free credit. They're all inviting you to get in on this. If you put on ESPN news, they're showing you the lines. They're, they, it, it, it's inviting, it's inviting, it's inviting. And it, all it takes is once for you to get in. I'm not saying you're hooked, but you're in. Like, and for a player of his caliber, why not? What's the worst that can happen to him? It happened. It's happened, right? He's suspended, but he was already out on mental health, uh, mental health issues. Now, now what happens if he plays that card? What happens if he says, hey, I was feeling really down that day and that was keeping me going. That was keeping me from... God forbid, doing something terrible to himself or somebody else. What are you, then what are you going to say? Then what happens? Uh, it's slippery, and there's nothing that there's nothing that Goodell could do about it because they're all in bed with all these guys now. They've made so much money on it. Every city's making money on it. I I don't know what you do from here. Right. I mean, I think the issue and what made it all the more glaring was the fact he put his name on it. You know, because it was a fan, I think it was Fanduel. So, if you have, this is where intermediaries come in, right? Your cousin, your yeah. you know, money yeah. manager. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, yeah. Here's 1500 bucks. play this parlay. Yeah. Don't tell me that's not happening now. And then, and then, what, and it, 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 it's, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. You're not, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. And, He's one guy that got caught. How many are not even getting caught? That's the whole, that's my whole thing. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914 315 1547. Again, that's 914 315 1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. But, you know, even though uh, we have, there's basketball seasons in fine form right now baseball season we don't know if it's going to happen there's plenty to talk about with football because quarterback's been on the move for the last couple of days Wentz went to Washington today 
Russell Wilson went to Denver yesterday. And Aaron Rodgers is heading back to Green Bay. Details are not disclosed yet. Which one of these moves makes the most sense? Well, if we're going to do an impromptu order up, I'm going to say the Rodgers move makes the least amount of sense. (laughs) From a standpoint of, and four years right now. So he'll be in his early 40s if he finishes his contract. A $200 million extension, $153 million guaranteed. To the point where A.J. Brown sent out a tweet. He said, I'm I'm playing the wrong position. Indeed you are, A.J. If you want to get paid, indeed you are. Aaron Rodgers, from a financial standpoint, from a pure dollar, pure dollar and year standpoint, that is the most absurd. In terms of ridiculous value being sent in another direction, you're telling me Russ at 33 and a fourth round pick nets you Drew Locke, Noah Fan, Shelby Harris. So a start your starting tight end, your starting defensive lineman, Drew Locke started. So, uh, your starting quarterback. Two firsts. <laughs> uh, what? Schneider got. Got. The Broncos. Big time. And now the Broncos firmly are there in win now mode. And I don't necessarily think they're better than third place in that division. Well, I think, well, I think we would agree that Russell Wilson is the third best quarterback in that division, right? I would concur. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm taking would, Mahomes and Herbert. Absolutely. I'm, I'm taking the upside on Mahomes and Herbert over, over um, Russell Wilson. Um, I mean, he, so we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, right? It's like, it, are other people going to adopt the Rams formula, right? Are other people going to go, hey? Let me go get a quarterback. I'm close, right? We even saw Tampa do it two years ago with Tom. It, they didn't have to trade anything for him, but they signed him. And the Rams went and traded for Stafford. They got there. It wasn't easy, but they got there. Now we're seeing a similar thing with Denver. Uh, the only thing I would say is, is I don't know if there's so... First of all, let's back up a little bit. It, for him to go to the AFC is tough, right? I mean, his it's it's not an easy road. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm not saying it's hard in the NFC, but it's it's a it's a lot harder in the AFC. Uh, he's gonna have to go through Mahomes. He's gonna have to go through Herbert. He's gonna have to go through Josh Allen. He's he and the only thing I would say is there's I don't think there's a lot of pressure on him to win now, right? I, he's got four, he's got a four year window, I think. And if he can get to a Super Bowl and deliver at least one in four in the four years, then I think this was worth it. He's got to get to two. He's got to get to at least two Super Bowls and win one. If not, you know, there's such this push for Russ Wilson to be successful, I feel like. Like, I think it was like two years ago. Everyone's like, oh, he's an MVP candidate. How come we've never talked about it? And then he stuck the whole second half of the season. And then instead of giving him the MVP, I'm pretty sure they gave him the Walter Payton Man of the Year award. Like, there, was, year, yep. there was such a push to get him something. And my guess is it's because they knew his time in Seattle was almost up. And they're like, oh, let's, you know, let's, let's get this guy something while he's here. A lot of people are saying he won those Super Bowls because of the defense in the run game. It's hard to argue that. It's hard to argue that point. Um, wh- who would you say is better? Would you say Stafford's better than Russell Wilson? Or would you say Russell Wilson's better than Stafford? Oh, I would say Russell Wilson is better than Stafford. Right. I would, too, I would say, too, just because he won a Super Bowl, right? And he's mobile. And he doesn't get hurt. I mean, he's pretty – I mean, this was the first year that he really got hurt. Um, you know – Denver, I think Denver overpaid, but and they're taking a, a page of the Rams book. This is the new way to do things. I thought it made sense, but I, I like I said, I don't think it's going to be results right away. AFC is tough. 
Russ might Russ, like I said, we both agree he's probably the third best quarterback in that division. Mm-hmm. Rogers going back to Green Bay, it's like why? Why why? Why does this make sense? Because what it worked the last six years? Because it didn't. Like what's gonna happen next year? What's gonna happen next year that didn't happen all these other years? He's got a hundred and fifty six million guaranteed. That's what it is. No, That's for him. Is. Yeah, but for him, but if you're the Packers, like what is this about? If you're Jordan Love, dude, trade me now. Like get me out of here. Send me to Oakland, send me to Minnesota, Chicago. Get me the hell out of here. He needs to demand a trade today, yesterday, tomorrow. Like, he is wasting his time there. He needs to get out of town. Now, Wentz, you know, I feel I feel terrible about this, but uh, we were talking about this in the production meeting, and I was watching – I've been watching the uh, HBO Hard Knocks in the season with the Colts and Wentz, and that guy's just not the same. He's not the same guy after that knee injury that he suffered – um, you know, against the Rams when he was having like an MVP season for the Eagles, he's just not the same. And you could tell, like mentally, he is. I feel like, and he's he's definitely devoted and he's trying to win. But the talent, I don't know what happened. It's just not there. I think he'll be fine in Washington, but uh, I think this is his last chance. And I I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't make it through the season and they wind up going in a different direction. Absolutely not. I mean, let's break down the deal, right? The teams are swapping second round picks. The commanders get Wentz. Get commanders third, the commanders third round picks in 2022 and 2023. The 2023 third round pick can become a second round pick if Wentz plays 70% of Washington snaps. We both know that's not going to happen. Right. He's just not going to do it. So now you have Wentz, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Taylor Heineke on that roster. And you know what? Taylor Which is not Heineke, bad, right? That's not bad. That's not, that's bad. not bad. That's not bad for them, especially in that division. That's fine. It's a solid QB room. Honestly, fine. I kind of feel that Taylor Heineke well enough to be the incumbent. But if Washington decides that this is the route they want to go, then that is fine. They absolutely can do that, but you're not getting MVP Carson Wentz. No. You're just not going to get him. And no. it, does he make Terry McLaurin better? I don't necessarily think so. Does he make Logan Thomas better? I don't think so. Does I mean, unless you're telling me that you're bringing in Zach Ertz along with Carson Wentz, if you're bringing in another wideout that, he has, that he's familiar with, if you're trying to rebuild the Eagles then maybe the only thing the only thing I would say is I thought Indy did well last year mainly because of their defense and their run game I do think if Carson went back to Indy they would have been a better team it would have been his second year with the team Um, I think they would have worked out a lot of the kinks and I do think he would have had a better season so now you plug him into Washington, which is with with a defensive minded coach, uh, he, he just has to play. He just has to play mistake free football. Now, say what you want about Carson Wentz last year. He had when you look at the numbers, numbers wise, he had a decent season. I believe he had twenty seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, something along those lines. But he didn't have that wow. He didn't have that bang. He didn't have that flair, right? And part of that might be because T Y was hurt. Michael Pittman's like not really a true one. He's more of a two. Um, Jonathan Taylor was really his show, and I think I think they were really surprised by how good of a season he was having. And I think they felt com- not that they felt compelled to give him the ball, but they were trying to throw more than they really had to. Um, so I think a second year in Indy would have been beneficial. I mean, who? Who are you playing, man? You're playing the Jaguars. You're playing the the, the Titans. Well, Titans are good, and you're playing the Texans. You could easily fin- finish one or two in that division, right? So, I do think he would have played better. I think Washington's a good move for him. Uh, I'm surprised at how much Denver gave up. I mean, it's a lot. And uh, how many other people were trying to get Russ? Were the Steelers trying to get Russ? Was Tampa trying to get Russ? Like I can't, I can't believe that 
Russell Wilson wholeheartedly signed up for this, right? Because the other thing was he he had to approve this trade. His wife probably had to approve this trade. It's Denver. Is it one of those things where he looks at it and be like, okay, let's just play a year here and then see if I can move on? Is he really looking to finish his career with the Denver Broncos? It's just that you, you look at other quarterbacks that have done what he's attempting to do, and I don't know if he fits that bill. We saw Peyton do it. We saw Tom do it. We saw Stafford barely do it, right? I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of things had to go right for that to happen. Now he's in a division where he's going to have to play Pat Mahomes twice. He's going to have to play Herbert twice. They gave up their tight end. Their their defense uh, their defense is good. I they lost Von Miller. Does Von Miller come back? Do they sign Bob Bobby Wagner? Who just who who uh, who just got cut? I mean that's another thing. It's like where's Bobby Wagner going? That's, that's that can be play. One. I mean like say Washington goes and gets Bobby Wagner. Okay, hey man, Bobby Wagner and Ron Rivera system. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Tyron Matthews likely not going to be able to re-sign with the Chiefs. Where does that guy go? So there's a lot of there's a lot of ways Denver can can get bulk up, but I I think the first year will probably be a wash. I will more expect something from Russ and company next year or two years. Now we're looking at rosters, right? We're talking about the win now method of less need, you know, Mister Fuck Them picks. But I don't know. Like you have. Robert Woods, you have Cooper Cup, you have, you know, you have name recognition, you have name value out there. Does this qualify? Because you're looking at your running, starting running backs, Javante Williams. Who's good. Player. He's good. He's good. He's, he's probably good. better than, he's probably better than the Rams running backs, I would think so, or on par with them. Yeah. Cortland Sutton. Yeah. No. Right. It just doesn't add up. Jerry no. Judy. No, it, it's not the same. It's, he wants it's, to. It's apples and watermelons. They're not, it is. They're not, even close. Well, not only that, but the Rams already got to a Super Bowl, right? I mean, the Rams got there with Goff. And and what they do after they lost, they got better, right? They, mm-hmm. they got more players. They got their quarterback. So the Rams were... Well, it's hard to disagree. It's hard to argue this point at this point, Z, but the Rams were really a quarterback away because they went and got their quarterback and they got back there and they won. Um, but I, I think that they still could have done it with Jared Goff. Like, yes, I, I do. Did. I agree too. But I don't know if Denver is really a quarterback away because even that one year they got Peyton. Peyton set the – I believe he set the record that year for touchdown passes, but they wound up getting slapped in the Super Bowl by the Seahawks. Uh, so I think it's going to take a year or two. If you've ever listened to a podcast and thought to yourself, hey, I can do this, then do I have the tools for you? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No specialty training, no specialty programs needed. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Plus, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. How cool is that? It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Go to anchor.fm and get started today. That's anchor.fm. What are you waiting for? Download the app. But with Wentz moving to Washington, the Colts suddenly do not have a quarterback. Does this mean they will be trading for Jimmy G? Or do the Colts have something else up their sleeve? I, if I'm the Colts, I'm calling James Winston. Okay. I never thought I would say that in a million <laughs> years. But I think James Winston would be appropriate not that dissimilar from Carson Wentz and if you can because there's armed talent there there's I mean Jameis Winston is turnover prone he cut down on it a lot but he's you know you're you are what your record says you are and your his record says he's a turnover machine right system with a really good running back a solid offensive line 
and weapons, even though they just lost Jack Doyle, because Jack Doyle retired. They're going to have to replace him. Maybe Rob Gronkowski? Hmm? Maybe? Yeah. Who knows? Just saying. But yeah. Jameis Winston in that system with those weapons, I think could be a really good get. I'm not sold on Jimmy G because it's a shoulder. People come back from knees all the time. Shoulders, I'm a little hesitant on. I really want to be. I really want to see him in camp before I make any, you know, any movement towards that. Or do I bring in a guy like a Mitch Trubisky? Yeah. You know, somebody on that level, and then just see where it goes, and then draft a quarterback. But you know, if I'm if I'm them, I'm looking at Jameis. I think Jameis would be a, a good get for them. Yeah, I, I mean, he's coming off the he's coming off the, the knee. Um, I didn't think about him. I think it's I think it's fair. I mean, for I think it depends on what the 49ers are looking for. Because honestly, I in my opinion, Jimmy G's trade value has gone down tremendously because there's not many more suitors left for him. He's coming off of a shoulder, and you've got to trade him. Like you can't keep him. You have to trade him. Yeah. So I'm not giving you the sun, the moon, and the stars. Um, and if I'm Frank Reich, you know, Jameis, yeah, I like Mitch Trubisky. I do. I do. I think the Giants are looking at him. The Giants are trying to get him. But you know, he's he's a guy that. He's going to be looking for a team, which he is. And he's also looking to prove a lot of people wrong. And he's got he's got upside. I mean, he succeeded in a terrible system put together by Matt Nagy. He finished over 500 in that system. Um, another guy, I think he just re-signed with the uh, Ravens today. But I like Tyler Huntley, the backup mm-hmm. quarterback of the Ravens. I think he's talented. And you don't have to do much. You just got to be able to run the football and do not throw, do not turn the ball over in, in Frank Reich's system. I mean, right. the defense is solid. The defense is good. I, it, I, it might be too late because I think, I think the Ravens just re-signed Huntley, but he would have been a guy I would have targeted. I think Mitch Trubisky is a good guy because he doesn't turn the ball over. He's a, he's a heady player. He's trying to prove something. And then if the four, as long as the 49ers don't want the sun, the moon, the stars, you go get Jimmy G. But what now? What happens to Deshaun Watson in this, in this market now? Where is he going now? Because a long time, we thought he was going to Denver. Now where is he going? Speculation was Seattle might want to package some picks and send them down to Houston, but I need to make sure, if I'm John Schneider, I want 100% certainty. I want to guarantee that this is going to be resolved. Not only is it going to be resolved, but Watson is going to be cleared before I make any move. It right. involves him because it's going to be a significant haul going back to Houston, and I'm not trading for the guy who's about to do time for alleged sexual assault. But it's not. You know, it's I not. It's, yeah, it's not so bad though, right? I mean, if you can get him, that starts your rebuild, right? You start your rebuild. I got my quarterback because he's locked in, and it's now we're gonna put together a team. And. Yeah. This is exactly what you were, you know, this is exactly what we've been saying about C- about Seattle. And, you know, we should probably and reach out to Joe, see what, uh, see what Joe is uh, seeing out in Seattle, but um, where, the, where they're feeling, where they're going with this. But that would definitely accelerate the process. But I don't necessarily know if this team is you know, any better with Watson than with Wilson, because you still have the same problem. So I really don't know about that. As far as Jimmy G goes, I mean, I could see Pittsburgh being involved. I can see, you know, if if uh, Cleveland decides to move on from Baker Mayfield, I can see that. If Carolina, Carolina needs, needs, still needs a quarterback, maybe they feel... That they could do that. Detroit, maybe Detroit wants to, you know, move on from Jared Goff. Like, there are teams that will vie for Jimmy G's services because he's a solid quarterback. He's a winner. 
He's, he's a, winner. a winner. He wins. He wins. You can say anything you want about Jimmy G. You can say he gets hurt. You can say he's a lousy passer. He 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 makes stupid mistakes, but he wins. The guy wins. He finds a way. So does Drew Locke start the season as the Seattle Seahawks quarterback, or do you think they're going to draft somebody? Or what do you think? What do you think they're thinking there? They're sitting at nine right now. They're actually in a really good spot. Um. I don't think they're going to take Pickett or Willis or Corral at that high at number nine. I think that's a little too much of a stretch, but they turn that into a, a solid offensive lineman who can actually protect Drew Locke. I think that Locke is a fine stopgap. And I think that... You know, free agency hasn't happened yet. So who's to say Jameis Winston doesn't end up there? And they'll instead of spending all that draft capital to acquire a guy like Watson, just spend some cash. Spend some cash, bring in a Jameis Winston to push Drew Locke, and whoever wins the competition wins the competition. So, or even a Teddy Bridgewater. You know, recreate recreate the Denver quarterback room, which wasn't that great to begin with. But if you feel like you want a veteran presence there, that's another guy. Teddy Bridgewater is available. So who's to say he doesn't end up in Indianapolis? He's a steadying force. Again, you just need a rudder for that ship. And, you know, Locke shows flashes, and Locke with DK Metcalf could be very interesting. So I would give him a shot and see what happens. Is your hair thinning or is your hairline receding? Scalp micropigmentation will fill in the areas where your hair is missing by creating a short buzz cut look. Micropigmentation is a non-invasive procedure that will create the illusion of hair follicles for 7 to 10 years. For people with alopecia, this could be a permanent fix. For people with scars on their scalp, this is a great way to camouflage a scar. Don't lose confidence or feel like you need to wear a hat wherever you go. Marquez Studio is located in the Bronx and is open for all your scalp micropigmentation needs. Consultations are free and appointments can be made any day of the week. Get your hairline back with scalp micropigmentation. The techs at Marquez Studio have over 30 years of hair cutting experience and can assist you with all of your questions. Call to schedule a consultation today, 646-221-8728. You can also visit them on Instagram at Bronx Marquez to see their gallery and view all their satisfied customers. Again, that is Marquez Studio, located in the Bronx, New York, 646-221-8728. time for the mail route on the fade route if you want to get featured hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com or slide in those dms at fade route podcast on ig or drop us a line on our twitter page at fade route dnz Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a full email box here for you. And if you want to be featured on the show, hit us up at faderoutmail at gmail.com or slide in those DMs on Twitter at FaderoutDNZ or FaderoutPodcast on IG. First email comes from Christina in Gloversville. The Buffalo Bills are rumored to be interested in Gronk. How likely is it that Gronk plays for his hometown team next year? Uh, I think it's doubtful. I mean, he can't run anymore. Uh, He can still block, but unless they're going to pay him big money, I can't see him going to cold, cold Buffalo for another season especially when his old offensive coordinator is the head coach of the Raiders. So you're thinking Vegas. Are you locking him into Vegas? Is that I'm just saying, I, no, I, I, don't really, I don't really think he's going to come back. But if he comes back, I, I don't see why he would go to cold, cold Buffalo. 
when he could just stay in Tampa or he can go play with Josh McDaniels in Oakland and then in, in Vegas. Yeah. No, but I, I agree with you in that regard. Um, if he goes to Buffalo, he's going to be just a goal line tight end, right? He's just going to be a poacher because Dawson Knox is firmly entrenched as the starting tight end and he is a quality target for Josh Allen. Last year, 55 receptions, 802 yards, 6 TDs. So, 6 touchdowns on 55 receptions. I say that's pretty good. So, if Gronk wants to be that in his career at this point, if he wants to be that guy who just comes in, boxes out, and catches touchdown passes, why not? Absolutely. I mean, if he wants to do that, more power to him. I don't think, I don't see Buffalo as a fit. Um, I definitely see, like I just mentioned, Indianapolis putting him with Mo Ali Cox. I think that would be a good, that would be a good fit. Um, possibly in Baltimore to play off of Mark Andrews. I think that would be, it, you know, it would definitely open up some things. Um, maybe Miami, you know, flanking Gesicki. You have a couple of different things, a couple of different ways you can go if Gronk wants to play. But, you know, like Vegas opposite Darren Waller, that's, that's a really interesting one, man. That's definitely one that I think could be good. And, you know, if, if he chooses to do that, then he will be even more dangerous than he's been in, in the past. Email number two. Number two. From Kim in the Bronx. <laughs> Derek Jeter might have failed as the CEO of the Marlins, but should MLB consider him for Rob Manfred's job? <laughs> My answer might surprise you. I think the league could benefit from a former player as a commissioner at this point. Anyone's better than Rob Manfred. So, yeah, why not? Well, at the end of the day, the commissioner is the spokesman of the owners, right? That's why there's a players' union. And that's why Tony Clark is the head of that players' union, because the commissioner does not speak to the players. He speaks for the owners. If you had a player, like we've been speculating about this for years, right? Like Peyton Manning to replace Roger Goodell when Goodell decides he wants to retire. And it's a great article that I found from two years ago, actually, from written by John Feinstein. And say what you will about Bud Selig, but he seemed to be a fan of the game. That definitely, that, that goes a long way, especially with fans, right? Because if you're a fan, you can appreciate the fact that, hey, this guy actually likes the game of baseball. With what Rob Manfred does to the game it makes you really question whether or not he actually likes the game of baseball <laughs> like, he has you know I want to make it faster no stop fucking with the game that I love sir please stop fucking with the game that I love reading an article they're experimenting with 14 second pitch clock or they're they're negotiating that a 14 second pitch clock with nobody on base and a 19 second pitch clock with runners on. And my response is get the fuck out of here with that. Baseball is a timeless game. It is the national pastime. It is played without a clock. Learn it, accept it and move on. Stop touching my game. Rob Manfred is trying to make all of these drastic and unnecessary changes and it's ultimately costing fans it's not creating new fans and now there's enmity between the players association and the owners so Derek Jeter why not Derek Jeter seems to have a, a good relation seem to have a good relationship with ownership and he had an ownership stake in the Marlins so he definitely can speak to that side of the table but then he can also speak to the fact that he was a former player so he can speak to the interests of that and provided that he 
change that perspective, I think that would be a fine move. And, you know, at the end of the day, Derek, there was no, you can question Derek Jeter's talent. You can, you can question whether or not he was overrated, underrated, rated just fine. But one thing you could not question is that Derek Jeter loves the game of baseball. That is unquestioned. That is undisputed. And you need a guy that loves the sport. And Derek Jeter is that guy. Email number three. From Jeff in New Rochelle. Will Rick Pitino win the MAC tournament? And will Iona make it back to the NCAA tournament? Uh, hmm. Rick Pitino, Mac Coach of the Year, twenty-five and six overall, seventeen and three within the Mac. Uh, Rick Pitino, friend of the program. What's up, Coach? Gotta love his chances. Gotta love the idea of Iona getting back into the tournament. Well. If they are going to do it, <laughs> it is as an at-large because breaking they news, lost. the they Riders just lost. Bronx Oh, lost. no. They beat the Iona Gales uh, 71 to 70 in the quarterfinals of the MAC tournament. So, the 14 and 18 Bronx off the Iona Gales, who were 17 and 3 in conference, 25 and 7 overall. <sighs> They're still going to make it, dude. They're still going to make it. God, I hope dude, so. You're looking That's at, bad. let's look at it, right? That's 17 a bad three. loss. That's it is a bad loss. It is a bad loss. loss, man. It could be worse. worse. It could be dead in the water like my Manhattan <laughs> Jaspers. 15 and 15, 8 and 12 in conference, and nine games back of Iona. They've been playing out the string since the beginning of the year. But Iona has enough of a resume that they should be able to make it at least they like to fuck with the MAC conference so I don't think they're going to get more than a 12 seed they'll end up in that 12 seed maybe 13 but you're looking at you know quality wins they beat number 10 Alabama beat number 10 Alabama like that is like the high that is the yeah but they only had three losses in conference that's pretty impressive too True. Um, their their stiffest test was against Kansas, number four, and they lost by thirteen. So, <laughs> but but you know it's a disparity of talent. MAC conference, Kansas. That's a game you're not supposed to win if you're Iona. So if you are, you know, if you're expecting miracles if you're expecting like an eight nine or something like that it wouldn't even surprise it wouldn't surprise me if they were in the first round you know the quote-unquote first round which we all know are playing games but they won't call them playing games it wouldn't surprise me if iona was even there but patino they did enough this year i think that they will make it in no problem email number four a bonus email this week from Claire in Boston. On the trade deadline, you suggested the Celtics blow up their squad. I think this is directed at me. And now they're on fire. Why? What do you think of their team now? Well, Claire, <laughs> they're on fire right now. They're 39 and 27. They're two games back of Philly in division. Tatum is playing great. Marcus Smart is playing great. Jalen Brown is playing great. They're third in the league in rebounds. What month is it? It's March. Tell me when it's the playoffs, and then I will back off my statement. I've said all I need to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I still think they should have blew it up. Um, they're Listen, they're not better than the Heat. No just sense. got back Oladipo and just got blown out by the Suns. Uh, they're not better than Philly, who just got James Harden. And they're not better than a healthy and fully available Nets team. So, 
when you take those things into consideration, yeah, I do still think they should have blew it up. But, you know, what they're competing against, they're going to be competing against, like, the Chicago Bulls, right? That that seems a good measure for Boston. Like, if you could beat the Bulls, you know, hats off to you. But That's yeah. their first-round opponent. That would be their yeah. first-round so opponent. That, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's really what we're looking at, and that's kind of what we're talking about here, so... Yeah, I, Claire, I think I'm sticking with Z on this one. They should have still blew it up. I don't need to see what happens in the playoffs or what's going to happen down the line. Um, they would have been better off, you know, arming other teams and, and getting ready to, you know, build for the future. I agree. Ultimately, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have something to prove, right? They, they were anointed as superstars. You want to talk about alleged superstars? You got two right there. You know, the baby Celtics. <laughs> were anointed they haven't won anything. They haven't done anything. Now's the time for them to shit or get off the pot. And I don't want to hear it if they lose again. Because last time it was Brad Stevens' fault. Brad Stevens is not the coach anymore. Now it's Ime Udoka. Well, it's going to be Udoka's fault? At some point, they're going to have to pay we are not good enough. And they've made, they've overhauled the roster. Moved on a bunch of guys, you know, they, they've moved on and built the team around Tatum and Brown. Now's the time to prove to the world that you're not just regular season paper tigers. Now's your time to take it to the next level. The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. And all right, boys and girls, it is time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how to do it. We put up the poll on our Twitter page at FadeRouteDNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. We announce the winner next week. If you want to leave us an honorable mention, comment. It's there for you. Do you know who won last week, D? I don't, because I gave up social media for Lent. Ah, that, I mean, that's a good give up. Well, clearly, this this guy also gave up Twitter for Lent. And he gave up a, a Twitter for another reason, too. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Eh, that kind of seemed a little skewed. I think that one was kind of going to be the runaway anyway. But uh, yeah, Vladimir Putin, definitely an alleged superstar. And let's see who takes home the ass this week. Who you got, D? Who are your nominees for alleged superstar? First up, I've got Ben Simmons. Oh, he's been on this list before. Part of a blockbuster trade. You have a choice to get revenge against the team that traded you. The coach that didn't want you and the teammates that talk shit about you tomorrow night and you're deciding not to dress, sit in street clothes on the bench. Ben Simmons, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, the Duke Blue Devils. Losing Coach K's final game in Cameron Indoor Arena in front of the golden brass of elite Duke players, minus J.J. Redick. Uh, Duke Blue Devils, <laughs> you are my alleged superstars of the week. Oh, and number that. three, this was an easy one. Calvin Ridley, missing time for mental health issues, decides to bet on football, and you're betting on your own team, clearly violating league rules. Calvin Ridley, you are my alleged superstar of the week. What do you got, Z? All great choices, my man. All great choices. I got some repeaters, as always, because Rob Manfred and Tony Clark, you're back. <laughs> you should name the award after them at this point because they're always on the list. You and just now you're back again. from out of space. <laughs> Jupiter, how appropriate. They canceled the second week of season. They cannot get their shit together. And 
Rob Manfred. You are my alleged superstars of the week. Jerry Jones. Yeesh. There's a lawsuit out there, boys and girls, from a 25-year-old woman alleging billionaire owner of the Dallas Cowboys paid her mom hundreds of thousands of dollars to conceal that Jerry Jones was in fact her biological father. <laughs> Jones. What do you to do? Jerry Jones, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Aaron Rodgers again! That the last two years of our lives, with the pain and suffering that you have caused, and the nonsense, and the torture of the will I and won't I, and do I want to stay, do I want to go, I've, you've created all this havoc in Green Bay. Money grab? Six million reasons not to like you. Rogers are my alleged superstar of the week. I'm starting to think we should name the award after these guys, man. They just keep coming. They keep coming. And a bonus. Djokovic, another one. To play in any U.S. tournaments because he's unvaxxed. livelihood on a chance at more majors or are you just satisfied with being a world class douchebag Novak Djokovic you are my alleged superstar of the week our nominees are in ladies and gents and for our nominees Just do better. Just do better. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today for all your Fade Route merch needs. I'm talking tank tops, t shirts, sweatshirts. Like yoga pants? We got those too. Like some cool accessories? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have so much more planned for you. But check out what we have today at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. Order up! Alright boys and girls, it is time for us to order up. Order up, order up. Order up. We are ordering up the top five available MLB free agent. Five, two, one. Who you got, D? I think my list is going to surprise you a little bit. So, number five, I've got Carlos Correa. His injury history concerns me. He's a solid baseball player and a good shortstop. He's a good hitter. He's probably going to be a Yankee, but he would be my number five. Number four, it's Anthony Rizzo. World Series champ will likely go wherever Freeman doesn't go, right? i um, thinking Red Sox, Yankees, Atlanta. Uh, number three, one of my favorite players, Nick Castellanos. Uh, solid outfielder, solid hitter. Helped me win my fantasy league last year. I like him at three. Um, two, I got Freddie Freeman. Uh, another, he's a former MVP. I think he's likely headed to, he's likely leaving Atlanta. I think uh, it's shrinking every day. Every day he gets further and further away from Atlanta. If the Yankees or Boston get him, you have to like their chances. Uh, number one, who's I think arguably my favorite player right now, uh, another former MVP uh, is Chris Bryant. Uh, he can play every position in the outfield. He plays the corners in the infield. And he's a solid hitter. And that's my top five. What do you got? I mean, those are all great choices. Absolutely. And 
based on who's left, I can't put a pitcher on there. I just cannot put a pitcher on this list. Is at Kershaw all. So still a free agent? Or he's Kershaw is money? still available, but what are you getting? You know, it's a giant question mark at this point in his career. Trash, it's, trash. <laughs> You're definitely not. You're getting Matthew Stafford's little buddy. You're not getting Clayton Kershaw, the guy who won multiple Cy Young. So, you know, it's definitely something that um, I would be hesitant of paying big money anyway. Right. If um, he, you're paying for a back of the rotation arm at this point. Number five. This might sound outside the box, but Nelson Cruz. I mean, Nelson Cruz is defying father time here. Like, he is just mashing the shit out of the ball. And if there's a universal DH... Smashing the ball like the Serrano of old. (laughs) That's right. He no help with curveball. He doesn't need help with a curveball. But if the universal DH gets off the ground, if the season gets off the ground, you now have 30 teams that will be vying for Nelson Cruz's services because he can still rake in his mid 40s. So Nelson Cruz for me is number five. Number four, I'm looking at Nick Castellanos. I like his versatility. I like that, you know, he's a quality hitter. You know, we'll see what, you know, being outside of Cincinnati will do. But Cincinnati's a fan box, but he definitely has the tools to make it happen. Number three, I love me some Anthony Rizzo. Like seeing Anthony Rizzo last year, like you know, it, it's one of those guys that you don't know how good he is until you get to see him all the time. And being in the New York market, we got to see him a lot when he ended up with the Yankees. And he was exactly what that team needed. And he was a steadying force, great defensive player, and a clutch hitter. Now this one's a toss-up. Right, toss up Chris Bryant or Freddie Freeman. I'm not a big Carlos Correa guy, as you know. For him to have that back injury, like that just worries me. I'm not going to commit big money to him, considering the fact that guys like Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Javi Baez, all these guys got paid. I'm just, I'm scared off by that injury history. You know, I'm scared off by that back. So Carlos Correa is not on my list. That leaves me with Chris Bryant and Freddie Freeman. I'm going Chris Bryant number two. I think he is an extremely versatile player. This was last year was definitely a make good season. And he's probably gonna end up with the Mets. And you know, hopefully able to stick on this trajectory to where he's playing like the Chris Bryant of old and not an old Chris Bryant. But you know. He def- the potential is definitely there. And number one, Mr. Brave, or at least he was, Freddie Freeman. You can't discount how good Freddie Freeman has been. As a Met fan, I've seen him torture my team. He was the new Chipper Jones, and I hope he gets out of the division. Did you hear that the Rays were interested? The Rays were going to make him an offer. Yeah. Can you ima- I can't imagine that. You yeah. know, I can't imagine... The Tampa Bay Rays, one, spending money. Yeah. And two, spending money on a free agent like Freddie Freeman. But that, Freddie Freeman's a game changer if he goes to any team. Defensively, he's solid. Offensively, he's solid. Clubhouse guy, lefty power, can hit to all fields. Freeman is my guy. And he's your guy, too. This has been the Fade Route with D and Z. Thanks for tuning in tonight. You can catch our podcast Wednesday nights on Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route, but we'll talk to you next week. If you want to get on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up at Fade Route Podcast on IG, Fade Route Mail at gmail.com, or slide in our DMs at Twitter at Fade Route DNZ. Questions, comments, picks, segment suggestions, you name it. We want to hear from you. Get at us in crowd.